quick video on how to derive integration from first principles using Riemann integrals. A Riemann integral is a way of approximating a curve by dividing it into lots of rectangles. So, what we can do is, we can see for any function f of x, we can partition the curve into lots of strips, and then the way of calculating the integral under a certain range would be to sum up all these strips under, under the curve. So, we're going to try and do that and show how we can derive um, an example for that. So, so the way of doing it is, if we try to integrate f of x from 0 to z, where z is an arbitrary point, we, go, we can say that's the limit as h tends to 0, k equals 0 to k equals n, sum of that, f of x, h. So I'll, I'll, explain what, I'll explain what this means. So h is the width of each strip. Obviously, if the width tends towards 0, then there are in any, an infinite number of strips in any given range, which means that instead of summing up a finite number of strips, we'll be summing up an infinite number, which is the same as an integral, effectively. So that, that's, that's, why we, that's why we're making the, the strips as small as we possibly can. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the I'm taking the, the value of f of x, which I'm defining to be um, the value at the start of each strip. You can define it at another point, but it's easier to do it at the start. So the start of each strip, which is um, f of x multiplied by h, which, which is basically just the area of the strip. So I'm going to find the total area. Okay. So actually, you can write you can write this in another way. You can see that that's the limit as n tends towards infinity um, of of this um, of the sum of f x um, h. Um, and and this is ex this is basically the same thing because what I'm doing is I'm saying that as the number of strips over a given range increases as n as n becomes infinite, then uh, in the same respect we're going to get a continuous integral rather than a summation because we'll have an infinite number of summations in any given range. So that's in any given range, so that's the idea to do that. So I'm defining my f of x to be um, the value of the of the function at the start of the, of each strip. So let's do an example. And I'm only going to do one example to try and keep this video short. So I'm going to integrate f of x equals x um, using first principles. And obviously there is another way of doing this because the, the line y equals x is is obviously a straight a straight a straight line at forty five degrees to the x axis. And when you're integrating over um, over f of x, you're just doing calculating the area of a right angled triangle. So the easiest way to integrate f of x equals x is just between the two points is just to find the area of your triangle. But this can be applied more generally. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use this method. But it should be easy to show that if you calculate the area of the triangle you will get that the integral of x is x squared over two in, in the same way. So if I'm integrating between zero and z and, and z is and z is my endpoint and I'm start I'm, I'm starting my integration at zero. So if I, I so if I'm if I integrate from zero to z of x dx and I'm saying that that's the same as the limit as n tends towards infinity, um, k equals naught to k equals n of x multiplied by oops uh, yes x multiplied by h. Now I'm using this in I'm using this infinite version of of the definition because um, because it's easier it's easier to to deal with than, than trying to take the limit as h tends towards zero. So it's the same. It's the same. It's basically the same thing as as n becomes infinite, this sum becomes more like an integral. So it's, it's the same way of doing it. So the x here is the value of the um, value of the function at the point x. So it's it's obviously going to be x. So at any given point, then the value of the function is going to equal x because f of x equals x. So that's fairly arbitrary, simple. So we can say that's equal to the same summation but then I've replaced x with k multiplied by h and the reason that you can do that is you can say that okay so I'm summing from k equals 0 to k equals n so at the kth sum, at the kth iteration of the summation so let k so so at, at any given k the area of the strip will be whatever the value of k is because k is equal to x so when, when k equals 1 x equals 1, multiply by h, because h is the width of the strip. So you can you can do that. And in this case, in the, in the, in the diagram here, I've let h equal 1. 
I mean, which makes sense, otherwise k might not equal 1. So that sort of makes sense. Now, and then, and then we can say that that's equal to the sum summation of k x h squared, and all I've done is multiplied out the brackets there. So um, evaluating this sum is rather easy. It's just the sum of integers. Um, the sum of k is just 1 plus 2 plus 3, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on. Uh, and the way that you and the way that you evaluate a sum of integers from 0 to n or 1 to n um, is um, you end up with half n n plus 1 and I'll, I'll explain why this is. I mean this is just a, a geometrical way of, of thinking about it. So when you're adding integers together you're, you're saying 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 okay so, so this is just a geometrical way of doing it. So so the way that the way that you, you add these um, numbers up is you can look at you can look at this picture here and, and think how is it possible to add all these numbers up to n well this width here is equal to n and then this width here is equal to n plus one and n, n, n minus one sorry so if we take this triangle here you can see this triangle here then that's going to sum up all these bits of the lines here so, and we're just going to be left with this rectangle. So that's obviously n minus 1 multiplied by n divided by 2 because it's a triangle. And then we also have to add n because we've got this rectangle here. So if you do this, you get n, n multiplied by... Oh, sorry, sorry I've, I've left the... I've left this, okay, so yeah, that's fine. So you get n multiplied by n minus 1 over 2 plus n, which is n squared minus n over 2, just expanded it, um, plus 2n over 2 just a different form so it's easy to see, which is a half n squared plus n, so a half n n plus 1, like that. So, again, fairly simple. So, evaluating this limit, so lim is n tends to infinity of this, um, we can re-express h as z over n squared, um, because h equals z over n, because z is the end point here, and each strip is of equal width h. So all we have to do is we, is we say that h is equal to z over n, and then that gives the width of each strip. So just just make us made a substitution there. Anyway, so that's so that's okay. So then we we'll substitute that in and then expand it out. So z over n squared is, is is z squared over n squared. So if you divide this thing by n squared from this, you get a half n squared over n squared, which goes to the half. Um, and then the and then the n bit here goes to um, one over n because we're dividing through by n squared. And now it's possible to take the limit. So as n tends towards infinity, this term tends towards 0. It's irrelevant. Um, 1 over infinity is a bit like 0. I suppose you could say that as, as n toward, tends towards infinity, 1 over n tends towards 0. Um, and then you're left with z squared multiplied by half, which is z squared over 2, which is what we were trying to do in the first place. We were integrating f of x dx between uh, z, z and 0, where f of x is equal to x, so that's z squared over 2. Um, and this, this works for other things as well, so if you were to try and do this with um, instead of x, which is which is easy to see anyway, you could try to do it with x squared, and instead of using the sum of integers, you'd be using the sum of squares, and it would work out basically just the same. Okay, thank you.